Rail's deep DPI sheep and goat traceability team, focused on sharing information across New South Wales on the roll, the rollout of the electronic identification for sheep and farm goats. She has a background in farm biosecurity, emergency livestock diseases, and completed her undergraduate and postgraduate studies in the livestock sector. Ash is based east of Goulburn, where she has a small breeding flock of Dorpers. Very good. Thanks, Ash. All right, thank you. Um, so, show of hands. I've now released the, the vital information that I have Dorpers, don't make fun of me. Who else in here um, has sheep or works in the sheep industry? Oh, good, at least half the room. Now, show of hands again, how many of you are currently using EIDs? Two. All right. Well, that number will soon be changing. Um, over the next couple of years as, as all these changes come into effect. Uh, so uh, watch this space, it'll, it'll be coming for you. Um, so just a real quick um, intro into the sheep and goat industry. Uh, in Australia, so their national flock size is over 70 million for sheep. Uh, and goat, it's a bit more difficult to determine the uh, goat size because a lot of that comes from harvested rangeland goats but there is about one and a half million goats processed a year and looking at the map new south wales in both of those sectors is the largest producer so for us it is vital and it's so important for us to to get the rollout of a vid right um, to help help our industry through it and help protect everyone uh, so the why. So why are we going to EID? Uh, so it really comes back to a national decision made, made at the top level uh, where all the states and territories got together and agreed that, that this is important to us and this is something that we need to start working on. And that decision was really sort of based around that um, very high, very real threat of foot and mouth disease that came or has come and still is very close to our borders just over in Indonesia. Um, that poses a very significant biosecurity threat to our industry. Um, it would basically ruin us um, in a very short period of time and just cause a, a lot of issues. And um, the movement of, of livestock would stop immediately. Markets to sell them in would again stop immediately. So. The decision to bring EID in um, came about because EID is already known as one of those tools that we add to our tool belt that helps protect us in biosecurity situations. So in such an event of a food safety um, issue or a disease outbreak, EID enables us to identify um, any affected animals and exactly where they have been throughout their lifetime to find out the potential source and location of, of the origin of where that problem has come from and also helps us really rapidly identify any potentially affected animals to target uh, response to those areas. So it reduces the um, significance of the impact because we can focus our response efforts a lot more accurately uh, and that um, causes fewer disruptions to industry as we, we sort of work through a response. And this all also links into market access, where having really good traceability of our livestock uh, helps us to access different international markets, where you know some countries really like to see um, the high standards that Australia has with our livestock management. And by having really good traceability, we can access markets that we haven't accessed before. Uh, so how EID is being supported uh, nationally uh, through the, the rollout across the country, the, the federal government has put up almost $50 million in funding towards implementation of EID. A good chunk of that has gone towards upgrading the NLIS database. Uh, so those of us with livestock that have used it before we do, um, we do see how you know, it has its good bits and its bad bits, but 
it's now going through a full upgrade. So it's going to be able to handle uh, the significant amount of information that's going to be coming through with the, um, the EID in sheep and goats. Um, and then they, some of that money also went into the state co-funding. And for New South Wales, approximately 30 million has been put towards this. And that has gone through some uh, rebates, which are and have been available um, over the last few months. So there's been rebates for producers to purchase e EID-related equipment, um, as well as sale yards, processors, and livestock agents. Uh, and then there's also been a lot of emphasis put towards um, developing lots of training and resources um, and information and you know, the likes of myself out here traveling around to, to disseminate that as best as we can. Uh, so for those with sheep, what are you supposed to do? Basically, the sheep and goat industry, we're catching up to the cattle industry. So just as cattle are now, they have an electronic tag before they leave their property of birth. And then when they're moved to, to another peak, to a sale yard, to an abattoir, uh, their analyzed database has that movement reported with the, the tag number of that animal, of the individual animal reported to the database. Sheep and goats is just going to be the same as that. An electronic tag and then those individual tag numbers are reported to the NLI's database when that animal is moved. And it's the tag that's changing, not the rules. So the rules about having a pick are still the same. The rules about using NVDs for um, any movements off your property, that's all the same. It's just the tag that's changing. Uh, so what is an EID? You'll see at um, a couple of the tables out the back there, we've got some examples of, of what they look like, which is very much the same as the current visual analyze tags for sheep and goats. Uh, one of the main differences is instead of having just your pick printed on the visual tag, that's now an analyze ID number, which is a combination of your pick as well as um, a couple of codes and a serial number. Uh, one code in particular uh, that's worth noting is you can see in the middle there there's an S for device type. That indicates that that tag is a sheep breeder tag. So it, that tells you that it's, it's species specific. Um, so if it was a T, it would be a pink tag for a sheep post breeder tag. If it was a K, that's your goat breeder tag. So it is species specific. You can't use your old cattle tags in your sheep because um, as, the, as the animal goes to a, a sale yard or an abattoir, it can't be accepted because the tag is not correct for that animal. Um, and then linked with that NLIS ID number, which is unique for every animal, is the RFID number, which again is unique for every animal. And that's the number that you pick up when you use a scanner to scan the microchip that's in the tag. So, this all comes about um, the first sort of implementation date for producers. So 1st of January next year, all your lambs and kids born from then onwards will need to have an EID before they leave their property of birth. Uh, and then from this date as well, any movements of sheep or goats that have an EID tag need to be recorded um, to the NLIS database the same as it is now for cattle by um, copying in that either the RFID number or the NLIS ID number for each individual for the movement. And then the second phase of this is 1st of January 27, all sheep, all goats, regardless of age, uh, will need to have an electronic tag before they moved. So this is specific uh, for fall goats, this is specific for farm goats, um, harvested rangeland goats that um, currently fit the um, ability to move with, uh, without a tag, those same rules will apply for that, but all, all sheep and farm goats will need to have their electronic tags. Uh, the rest of the industry has also got to jump on board and, and get um, uh, doing involved in, in EID, and for our New South Wales processes, they'll all start scanning any electronic tags that come through for processing from the 30th of June this year. Uh, that's gonna give them a bit of time to be able to um, 
get their systems working and operating for scanning tags before there's too many tags coming through, as we have found that with all the moving parts and electricity and everything that happens in processing plants, it can interfere with readers. So they're coming in earlier, just so they can troubleshoot any potential issues with that. And then again, from the 1st of January next year, all our sale yards, depots, and agents will also need to be scanning EID tags when they come through and uploading those to the NLI database for any movements that occur. Um, a couple of quick tips as to how to use EIDs. One EID per animal. Um, two is unnecessary, messes with readers. Uh, one is all what's needed. Um, if, they if they have any existing visual NLIS accredited tags, leave those on. It is still an offence to remove any NLIS tags, so that still carries through to this stage. So leave on your visual tags and just add an electronic tag if one is needed. Um, the only time it is okay to remove a tag is if an electronic tag is malfunctioning. It can be removed and replaced. Uh, as I mentioned before, EIDs are species-specific, so when ordering your tags, make sure uh, they are for the correct species you're applying them to. And unlike with cattle that have to, be, have to have the button tags in the right ear, sheep or goats can have the electronic tags on either side. It's, it doesn't matter. Um, so you're probably thinking, at least by now, how on earth does this relate to pastures? Um, and that is an excellent question, and you would be forgiven for thinking that. You might recall from some of our presentations earlier this morning about how important it is to record and monitor your soil, your health, um, your pastures, if you're playing around with your pastures, you know, how they're growing, how they're establishing, keeping on top of your recording to see if what you're doing is working. EIDs are another tool for monitoring that. So if you're playing around with um, pasture mixes, if you're playing around with you know, improving your soil, EIDs can record at that individual level how your stock are responding to those pasture treatments that you're doing. Because at the end of the day, we're a grass farmer before we're a sheep farmer. We, we can't grow sheep without growing good grass, unless, of course, feedlots, a bit different. Um, but by recording, animal responses at that individual level, you can find, easily find the average, but you can also find your different groups that are responding extra, extra good, or those that are, are not responding particularly well. You can then isolate those individuals, the ones that are responding well to a pasture treatment that works for you and you want to keep, those are the ones that you want to keep and retain for your breeding flock. Those that you can isolate and identify that aren't growing too well, uh, their fleece isn't that great, they're just not working for the, the changes that you're making, again, you can isolate those and select those, they're going to be your cull group. And other examples that we've got on here, if, you know, if your um, top priority of your business um, is wool production and you want to have heavy fleeces with a fine micron, again, you can record all that information on the individual animal level, identify your absolute best performers that you want to retain for breeding. You might have a commercial and a stud group. You might want to separate them out doing that. Um, and then again, you can identify your individual animals that are not performing as well, and those are your culls. And by doing these things, by having this data-backed decision-making, the performance of your flock is going to just go up and up and up, and you're just going to increase leaps and bounds. Um, and similar for, for meat enterprises, um, looking at, at aspects that are important to you, you can make those database decisions. Uh, so a question that we do get asked a lot is, do I need to spend a whole bunch of money on a whole bunch of different equipment to help with this EID recording? And um, the answer to that is maybe. It depends on your objectives and what you want to get out of your business, but also how you operate. Um, so if you do want to go down the individual animal performance recording uh, route, totally optional. You can, you, you don't have to. Um, but if you do, then EID equipment is probably going to benefit you. 
Um, and that can be as simple as a handheld reader that's got a bit of functions to it, or you can go all out and get something like what's pictured on the screen, auto drafter, automatically weighs, scans, records information um, as the animals basically take themselves through the draft. Um, and if you purchase large numbers of stock from other producers, as the, the buyer, you are responsible for doing the NLIS movement record. And for that, you will need the list of all the tag numbers of all the, the stock that you've purchased. So for that, a reader would be handy so you can scan them all when they come off the truck, get your transfer sorted. Um, situations where you don't necessarily need any EID equipment, uh, if you don't really purchase any animals, you've got a closed flock, um, or you only ever purchase a small number of animals or from a sale yard. The sale yard does the NLIS transfer onto your property for you. Don't need to worry about it. Um, or if you only purchase a couple of rams every couple of years, then you can just manually read that NLIS ID number that's printed on the tag and use that for your NLIS movement record. Um, so that's definitely all very possible that you can do without any reading equipment. And if you do have cattle or have been involved in cattle in the past and you have any readers that you've used for cattle, they will still be able to be used with sheep. It's all the same technology. Uh, so New South Wales, as I mentioned before, has a rebate that's available for producers. Um, that QR code just takes you to the website where there's more information about the rebate. Uh, it's um, for producers, but there's also another separate rebate for agents that, again, covers up to half the costs of EID-related equipment. Um, and all the information's there on the Rural Assistance Authority website uh, for all these details, or you can chat to me about it later. Um, and just to finish off there, so that's a QR code to our website where we have um, upgraded our website and put in an absolute abundance of information for different parts of the industry. Uh, so jump on the website, there'll be heaps of info there to, um, if you have any questions. We've got case studies that we're working on with producers that uh, are either in the process of adopting EID or have been using it for years and they just talk about their story, how they use it, the challenges that they've had. Um, that's all on there. We also have um, a lot of this stuff active on our Facebook site. And that's our the email address for our team. If you have any events coming up that you want us to attend, uh, if you have any general questions, um, anything at all, more than welcome to reach out. And that's all. Thanks. Thanks, Ash. Um, we'll keep things moving.